Emeritus Bishop of Hong Kong, Cardinal Joseph Zen, has been released on bail from police custody after his arrest on Wednesday. He was charged with colluding with foreign powers related to a nonprofit group of which he is a trustee. What could happen to him if he's convicted? And what should we make of the timing of his arrest? Joining me now to discuss this and much more, senior fellow at the Hudson Institute Center for Religious Freedom, Nina Shea. Nina, uh, Cardinal Zen was arrested as he attempted to board a plane to Germany on Wednesday evening. Uh, he's been charged with colluding with this foreign government or a foreign government for his pro-democracy advocacy, particularly his involvement in an outdormant charity that helped political prisoners in Hong Kong with legal expenses. What do you make of these charges and the timing of his arrest? Well, Raymond, um, it's great to be with you. The, it, the, he could have been charged for colluding with foreign powers just by being a Catholic priest because he um, is loyal to a pope in Rome. Um, he um, is probably facing three years in prison. Uh, he will be convicted um, if this goes to trial, uh, which it is on track to do. Um, it's it's a mm -hmm. personal tragedy for him, but it's also um, far deeper than that. It's the last religious freedom is being crushed um, in this. He is the most ho highest profile face and voice for religious freedom in China, mm. all of China at this moment. And so that is being crushed and democracy is being crushed because that is the last freedom left in Hong Kong. So democracy in Hong Kong is wow. being wiped out as well. Um, it is intended yeah. to cow the church into submission to the Chinese Communist Party. Now, he's been released on bail. However, his passport was retained by the Hong Kong police. Now, Cardinal Zen is a 90-year-old man. He's been on this show many times. What is his arrest meant to signify to the pro-democracy community, first of all, Nina? Well, it's extremely demoralizing for them. Um, it, it means that there, no one can speak out. There will be no right of conscience, of individual conscience or dissent. Um, so it's, um, it's a, a turning of the, uh, a new chapter in Hong Kong. They've just elected a hardline former security official to be their next chief executive. Mm -hmm. Um, John Lee. So um, this is a new chapter where Hong Kong is shut down and absorbed into um, mainland China, really. It's, it becomes uh, under the thumb, under the jackboot of the CCP. Um, the churches mm. um, and Christian schools may still be standing, but they will be uh, teaching the CCP yeah. commandments and preaching the same. Yeah, I want to get into that. Sea. Yeah, let's get into that in a moment, but I, I, I need to start here. Cardinal Zen, as longtime viewers of this show will know, is a, has been a very loud and consistent voice against the Chinese Communist Party and their encroachment on religious freedom. And he's really one of the only remaining voices of dissent within the hierarchy of the Catholic Church in China. He's also been very critical of the Vatican Secretary of State, Paroline, and the Vatican itself. Here he is talking about the Vatican-China deal, that secret deal that they've hatched has been, uh, it was ratified several years ago. It's up for renewal now. This is what he said when it was first announced. To listen. I asked uh, the Holy Father to arrange a, a, a meeting uh, with me and Cardinal Parolin to discuss about that document. Huh? Uh, also because the document uh, is a very strange case. It came out without any signature, mm. without the specification from which the, the custody. Right. That never happened. No mm -hmm. document came from the Holy See, you see? And so uh, uh, I went there. Uh, the Holy Father invited me to supper, mm -hmm. and the uh, Paloline was there. Ah. He didn't say a word, but I was not granted a, a, a discussion. Oh. So at the end of the supper, uh, I said, so Holy Father, may we have some uh, discussion about the, 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 the document? The Holy Father said, eh, I'm going to uh, look into it. And that was it? And then he saw me at the door. That supper wow. uh, surely arranged by Cardinal Paroline. And mm -hmm. he wants to tell me, you see, we are in front of the Holy Father. He listened to me and not to you. Mm -hmm. So just 
move along. Get lost. He has since called the Secretary of State a liar and even wrote a book about what he called the selling out of the Chinese church by the Vatican. Now, Vatican diplomatic sources this week told me that for some in Rome, Cardinal Zen's arrest was regarded as, quote, merciful silence. Now, I'm sure the Sanhedrin and the Romans felt the same way many years ago. Uh, on Wednesday, Nina, Vatican press spokesman Matteo Bruni issued a statement on Zen's arrest. It read, quote, the Holy See has learned with concern of the news of the arrest of Cardinal Zen and is following the developments of the situation with extreme attention, end quote. That's the entire statement, Nina. Your reaction? Yeah, there, there's self-censorship going on to preserve this dreadful agreement where the Vatican has agreed to collaborate with the Chinese Communist Party in the appointment of Catholic leaders, Catholic bishops in China. This is what Cardinal Zen um, stood against. He went on the world stage to protest it, to warn against it, to warn the Vatican. And um, now, you know, the, the, he, he has been shut down and his, his voice is, will be sorely missed. Um, and, and really, mm -hmm. that leads to the question of, you know, what else are they going to self-censor? Are, are, uh, the, the Hong Kong diocese itself is timidly asking that justice be done in his case, um, that there be justice in his case. That's a very ambiguous statement in the Chinese Communist Party context. Uh, they should be demanding, and the Pope mm -hmm. Francis should be demanding, Raymond, that um, all charges be dropped, that religious freedom be restored, and that they get to appoint their own bishops. They should walk away from that agreement, um, and they should mm. stop calling uh, people who disagree with them, like Cardinal Zen, uh, as having um, a psychological problem, as, as one ambassador from the Vatican did. And, and, and Cardinal Parolin himself should stop denying, when he's asked, or denying, period, that there is persecution of the church. Cardinal Zen's uh, going on, on some kind of show trial in, in Hong Kong is a prime example of this kind of persecution that's taking place every day in mainland China. Wow. Wow. No, I, it's, it's heartbreaking. I, I was sickened when I heard the news, uh, because you thought, given his age and uh, esteem in the community, that that would insulate him a bit from this kind of thuggery, but apparently not. Now, look, I understand, Nina, and, and our viewers will appreciate, the Vatican is in a tough spot, mostly owing to their own collusion with the Communist Party for years. You can't make deals with these people and then, you know, demand something of them. What should the Vatican do about that agreement with China? Well, it's set to be renewed again in October. Yeah, they should let it expire. They should just quietly, uh, you know, it was it, it was the Vatican who was announcing it, who was, um, uh, you know, pumping it up um, internationally in an international press before. I don't think the Chinese will say anything, and they could just quietly let it expire. It probably won't make any difference on the ground in the in the sense that they will the Chinese will continue to persecute the the bishops and priests. Right. Um, but there, you know, the the Vatican really should start working to form an underground, quietly form an underground. I mean, that's the only way this church is going to survive the the Catholic Church um, in China. And that's how they survived mm. before during the Cultural Revolution of Mao. So um, these are very, uh, th these are alarming times. The Vatican has to admit, to itself at least, that the mission of the church, the pastoral mission of the church, which is the, the reason for the agreement, they say, is incompatible mm -hmm. with the mission of the Chinese Communist Party. They are being absorbed into yeah. the United Front Work Department of the Chinese Communist Party, and that is it, totally inconsistent with Christian values, the gospel, and everything the Catholic Church stands for. Yeah. Well, th this is why Cardinal Zen was morally opposed to this, uh, this agreement, because it would compromise the bishops and, therefore, the, the handing on of the faith and the continuance of the faith through ordained priests. If you don't have licit bishops, you can't have licit priests. And he said, y you've got bishops and priests who are now moving in with their wives into the churches. And then, and you know, Nina, now the churches are required to teach basically Xi and the Communist Party's propaganda, wrapping it in the gospel at these masses. So I, I don't know how effective a group of people meeting in a room in some fake version of the Catholic Church really is to the furtherance of the gospel. 
Yeah, uh, she, she is quoted in leaked documents to the New York Times in respect to the, uh, with, with regard to the Uyghur Muslims, which are now, we know, undergoing genocide there by them. Um, he's quoted as saying, show no mercy. This is the value system of the Chinese Communist Party, show no mercy. This is why the gospel passage of the stoning of the adulterous woman was changed um, by them to have Jesus stoning her, because the lesson of that story mm -hmm. was they wanted to come out of it was show no mercy. This is not a Christian yeah. and, or Catholic uh, value. So this is what is at stake. Yeah. The, the core uh, character and value system and traditions and, and uh, rules of, the, of Christianity. Gosh, Nina, when I when I think about this, and the you know, I've I've, I've met some of those uh, dissident Catholics from China. I've heard their stories, contacted them, and, and spoken to them at length. Um, we're going to run out of millstones when the final accounting is uh, comes due <laughs> on this story because it's such a perversion of the gospel and an abdication of this faithful church that's been faithful for so long. It 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 really makes you want to break down in tears. Um, it, it does. During an in-flight press conference. Mm -hmm. On Wednesday, uh, the deputy White House press secretary, who's soon to be the press secretary, uh, Karine Jean-Pierre, uh, had this to say when asked about Cardinal Zen's arrest. Freedom of expression are critical to prosperous and secure societies. We call on PC PRC and Hong Kong authorities to seize targeting Hong Kong's advocates and to immediately release who have been unjustly detained and charged, like the Cardinal Joseph Zenzakian and others arrested today. Nina, your thoughts on that White House response. Is it enough? Uh, no, no, it's not enough. Um, he has been released already. As we know, he was released several hours after he was mm -hmm. taken in on bail. And um, he is, you know, he could be, uh, they could be making a martyr out of him, which would actually backfire on, on the CCP. Um, you know, it makes mm. me think of uh, Cardinal Kung, Ignatius Kung, who spent 33 right. years in a prison after a show trial under Mao in the mid-50s. And, um, mm. you know, Car he was the bishop of Shanghai, Raymond, and, and Cardinal Zen was born in Shanghai. He was, he's no doubt inspired yes. in his faithfulness by uh, that example. And he himself is going to inspire others if they go through with a show trial for him and he spends his last, you know, remaining years behind bars. Um, yeah. You know, and he's so fragile, as she pointed out. Uh, at 90 years old. So um, this is, um, uh, it, it may end up backfiring on them. The Vatican should stiffen its spine and, and, and um, they have a moral yes. dilemma. It's no longer a, <clears throat> a diplomatic issue with them. This is a moral issue. And they need to be clear that they're not going to collaborate in appointing leaders <clears throat> if this is what happens to the leaders that are, um, you know, cardinals, princes of the church. Mm -hmm. I got to believe that the timing on this um, was influenced by events in the United States as well. And um, I, I say that because the Chinese Communist Party has played into, tapped into memes that um, are in American political discourse. And they have, uh, for example, uh, charged the Uyghurs. Um, they, they are accused of committing genocide against the Uyghurs um, by the United States government. Um, for having forced abortions. The wolf warrior ambassador in Washington of, the, of, the, of China um, put out a, a tweet saying that they were preventing, uh, these abortions were needed to prevent women from um, becoming baby-making machines to liberate them. Um, so they, they play mm -hmm. into that, and I think that on the Mother's Day pro-abortion protests against Catholic Church targeting and singling out Catholic Church which has uh, made an impression on the CCP and President Xi, and, and they noted that this, you know, may be a favorable time for them to uh, uh, lock up wow. a Catholic leader in Hong Kong. So I think it's hmm. important no. for President Biden to speak up as well and, and take action. It's astounding.
No, it's a, I mean, these people are the John Fishers and Thomas Moores of our age. That's who these men are and women are. Uh, they're heroic. <laughs> and meanwhile, the United States is sending another $40 billion to Ukraine in the name of freedom, yet we're deaf when it comes to the suffering of the Chinese people who've been laboring under this kind of oppression and authoritarian uh, reign for decades. In fact, the Biden administration is considering lifting tariffs and sanctions against China, which blows my mind, Nina. Yeah, they're, they're considering lifting sanctions against uh, solar panels because it interferes with their uh, green, uh, you know, the, the green agenda is going to trump um, all, all kinds of values here on democracy and human rights at the governmental level. And um, it, this, it, it is. It's, it's such hypocrisy. Um, it's a sellout. And uh, China has a huge market, and that's what's driving <clears throat> this. And um, it, it, well, it's driving uh, the, the U.S. response. Uh, it, the Vatican response is really hard to understand. Um, you know, I, I really don't understand why they're giving away uh, power to, and appointments to this, frankly, evil regime. Um, you know, accused mm. of organ harvesting. There's plenty of evidence for that. Uh, Congressman Chris Smith had a hearing this week on that issue, um, pointing out it's undeniable that what's going on in China. Lots of documentation. Yeah. And you mentioned earlier, and I have to get out on this, I'm almost out of time, John Lee, uh, the new uh, chief executive <laughs> in Hong Kong. He's a Catholic, by the way, uh, so-called. He was forced into the seat in an uncontested election. And guess what, Nina? He won 99 percent of the vote. Isn't that amazing? Uh, but in, he's now the CEO of Hong Kong. There are about 190 Catholic schools there, 16% uh, of the population is Christian, 5% Catholic. What happens to the religious schools, the Catholic institutions in Hong Kong, now that Lee is clearly in the position of doing the CCP's bidding on this? Yeah, um, there are 60% of the primary, 6-0%, Raymond, of the, ca of the um, primary and secondary schools are Catholic or Christian. They will be uh, teaching, they already are teaching the national security law. That's a requirement for graduation under the law. Um, that means that intimidates people, tells them that they have to remain silent, they have to self-censor, they have to conform to socialist values, the communist, that means the Communist Party dictates, and that's what's going to happen. They will lose their character, they will be Christian in name only, they will um, still be standing, some of them, but they will be uh, teaching the doctrine of the Chinese Communist Party instead of um, the Bible or the Christian doctrine. And um, mm -hmm. they will be led by people who are either members of the CCP or sympathetic with them. It's remarkable to me that we have discussions about lifting sanctions, increasing trade relations, dumping more money into China. Meanwhile, this is the backdrop. This is what they're doing to their own people. And frankly, we are funding. Nina Shea, thank you for your reportage, for your insight. You can follow all of Nina's work at the Hudson Institute at Hudson.org. Thanks again. Thank you. Thank you.